Hello and welcome. This is EdTech Tuesday. And my name is Sandy Roberts. I am a maker and a, a STEM educator in New Jersey. I'm the owner of Kaleidoscope Enrichment, which is my business that brings STEM programming to schools, libraries, homeschool groups, churches, uh, individuals, pretty much any place that people and kids are gathered that want to learn about science and technology and engineering and maker projects, I'm there. I'm also the makerspace coordinator for the Warren County Library System, which is a free public makerspace in Stewartsville, New Jersey. Uh, unfortunately, closed right now due to COVID, uh, which is part of why I'm bringing more programming online right now. Um, I am also the author of the Big Book of Maker Camp Projects, uh, which has over 100 different projects for kids and adults to share and enjoy in camp, in maker spaces, or at home. So, why am I here? Like a lot of us, a lot of educators, I am finding myself ha having to operate more in a virtual world right now. And uh, that's presented some challenges, especially with the technology, moving courses online. It's a very different experience. And um, I know I'm always searching around for like just the right app, just the right um, free uh, software to help me do that better. So a couple of weeks ago for Virtually Maker Fair, I did a presentation called OBS for Dummies Like Me. And that was about using open broadcaster software to um, merge together different, <clears throat> different camera views and screen captures to make a really easy live streaming experience. Anyway, it went over really well, people enjoyed it, and they felt it was helpful. So I figured since I'm home and I have a little bit of extra time, maybe I can share some of the other technology tools that I find really useful for creating content um, and share them with you in some really short tutorials that I hope will be helpful. So that's the basic idea. And I'm, my goal is to release another EdTech Tuesday tutorial uh, once a week. So this is my first one. I am going to start today with a uh, website called Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. It is a free graphic um, arts program, essentially. You can use it online on the web. Uh, you can use it as an app on your uh, iPhone or iPad or on your Android device. Um, so it's very accessible. You can use it kind of anywhere. Um, and it is free, which is awesome. It's also a really powerful tool, as you'll see. It has a lot of great functionality in it. One of the strongest things about Canva is that it comes with tons of templates and easy to use features that let you create really professional, really sharp looking graphics really fast. So whether you're making a really cool looking graph for um, a lesson or you want like a great background for your PowerPoint or your Google Slides presentation or you just want to make great posters and social media posts to share what uh, materials you're offering, Canva offers um, the ability to make all of those things surprisingly quick and surprisingly easily. Um, and again, free. In fact, if you are an educator, you can also apply for a Canva for Educators account and that will give you all the pro features in addition to the free ones. And that's really excellent if you're going to be using something like this uh, frequently. I do have an educator account through the library. I'm going to be showing you the free account today, though, because that's a great place to get started until you know that you really um, like the software and can use the software. So um, why don't we dig right in, get started, and I'll show you some of the basic features of Canva. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so this is your basic Canva site. You're going to need to make an account. It's quick, it's easy, um, and you'll come to this home screen. All right, a couple of things that you need here. In fact, I'm going to close that, get rid of that. Um, you can see all the designs that you have in your account quickly and easily. It will recommend different designs for you based on your usage. If you are uh, in need, if you have a business or even sometimes with the library, it's a pro feature, but you can add branding so it's all in one place. Um, you can create teams to share easily between one another. Some of those features are going to be pro, and again, that's another reason to get that um, Canva for Educators account, um, because it makes it very easy to create teams so you can all work on um, different items together. So if you have a team of people that all work on posters, say, for your organization, that can be really useful. 
And then you have folders. So as you create items, you can make folders and organize yourself uh, more easily. Okay, coming back up to home. The easiest thing to do is say, okay, yeah, I did this before. Um, say I want something for Father's Day. Boom, all kinds of different potential Father's Day items pop up. I'm gonna pick something really simple to get started with. Here we go. Okay, now obviously I'm just playing around. I'm not worried about the sizing right now. We'll get to that. But let me show you some of the basic features. Okay, um, everything is obviously separate elements and you can see as you scroll over them, they'll each highlight. And you can group items together if you want to. So here I'm holding down the shift and clicking on multiple items. And if I hit group, boom, they're all together. And then I can ungroup them just as easily. This is really useful if you're moving around multiple items at once. You can also change the color of pretty much anything. So here's my background. Maybe I don't like that black. Maybe I think this is just a little too dark. Oh, here we go. That's a cool color. Or maybe, uh, maybe my dad's more into green. There we go. Say I want to do a custom color. I can come up here to new color and just drag this around to find different depth and lightness hues. I can scroll here for all kinds of different colors. Oh, I kind of like that. That's nice. Um, you'll notice that each one has the hex code for that color. So I tend to keep a notebook if I'm working on a big project just to make sure that I have that written down if I want to use the same color across multiple projects. So just a little pro tip there, just a post-it note or a notebook to note some of that can be really helpful. Um, so great, I, I got a color I like. Now, no, I got this, this block here. What am I going to do with that, right? Click on the color again. Now it's remembering the document color I have for this document. It will translate to other documents, but at least for this one, it's quick and easy to make sure I get the same color. Okay, so I've changed my background. That's nice. Maybe, maybe he's not the raddest. Uh, dad. Hey, Dad, you're totally the uh, awesome best. Is that a word? I don't think so. We'll just go with best. How about best? You're totally the best. Now, maybe you don't like yellow. For the text, easy enough to come up here. And again, you can pick whatever colors you prefer. You can also change the size. So maybe since I'm using less letters, I want to make it bigger. I can make it bigger. I can. Um, in some cases, depending on the font, which we can also change. Say I want to do that. That's, you're the best. That makes it very clear, right? Um, depending on the font, you can bold it. Oh, Got to select it. You can use bold. You can italicize. You can underline. Perhaps not all three at once, um, <laughs> but you can do that. Um, you can also... Uh, basically, it just rolls through the different alignments of the text. So you've got center, left justified, you've got a um, full justify, right justify, um, that you can kind of uh, cycle through. You can do all caps or no. There is no small caps option, which is kind of a bummer. It would be nice, but hey. Um, you can, of course, do a list, all kinds of different lists. You can adjust the spacing. So for example, if you want to adjust the spacing between your letters, you can do that. Now say, oh no, I just messed it up and I don't remember what it was at. Undo button, it's your friend, right? So there's a lot of ways you can adjust this. Um, you can also add a link. So if say you're using this for an event and you want to link directly to that event page, you can add a link to specific text or graphics on the, um, document and it will be clickable when you share it like on social media um, or if you embed it on the website for example. You can also lock things in place so that they can't be moved around. So if like I lock this, I can select it but I can't change where it is. Um, I would have to unlock it like that. Um, I can change the transparency of items so more or less transparent. I can duplicate it many, many times, maybe not that many times. Um, and I'm not crazy about this color, so why don't we just go ahead and I'm just going to pick a different color. There we go. I like that. I don't know why. Um, 
Oh, you can also change this position. You can move it backwards. In this one, it will, it will only go past the what's considered the background. But um, if we had multiple pieces, and I'll show you in a little bit how that works. You can also align it to the top of the box or the top of the page or the middle. So that's really helpful if, uh, if you don't have a great eye for that because you'll notice a little bit of a downside to Canva. There's no rulers. So it's not easy always to line things up. But you can, if you see that purple line going across the center, that shows you that you're centered in the middle of the page um, vertically. And you can drag, and there you go. And now you're in the middle of the page um, horizontally. So it does kind of give you that um, helpful bit. But there, there's no ruler. You can't necessarily set a guide. Um, so that's a little bit of a frustration for me. I wish I was able to do that. But, um, but hey, you've got a lot of other functionality here. So um, let's see. What else can we do? Maybe, maybe we're not all that into mustaches. Maybe Dad doesn't have a mustache. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the trash can, take the mustache out. But I want to put something in there. So I can go to Elements. Okay, and I can come right in here, and this is all kind of icons, shapes, things like that. And uh, here we go. I'm going to add pizza. Dad, you're the pizza best. Now, see this little circle here? I can resize that pizza, no problemo. Depending on the graphic, uh, you can flip it all kinds of different ways. I kind of like it like that. Um, in this particular case, you can actually edit the color. So, um, I don't know, maybe you want your pepperoni to be a little bit more red. You can do that, um, which is really nice. Not all graphics will let you do that. Depends on the graphic itself. And you see there, I'm making sure it's nice and lined up in the center. So things like, like this pro one, anything that has a little crown, that's a pro. You can get it um, items even if you don't have a pro account. You can pay a dollar to use it. So if it's a graphic that you just really love and have to have, uh, you can, there is that option. But some of these sorts of graphics don't necessarily have the ability, if you see up here, they don't really have the ability to um, change the colors. They're treated more like photos. So you can crop them, which is cool. I only want pizza maybe. But you can't um, change the colors on them. Um, so that's how you go ahead and just change it. Uh, <laughs> a uh, element. Some other elements to look at. If you scroll down a bit, they have um, all kinds of shapes. They have stickers. Some of them are um, obviously uh, moving, which is really fun if you want to make an animated graphic to get the kids' attention. Uh, really useful for like Friday at the end of a lesson, and you want to ask like one more, you know, exit question. You know, a little bouncing ice cream cone is going to probably get their eye a little bit easier. Um, there are all kinds of charts you can add. You can add gradients, lines, all kinds of different items here. Most of them are free. Um, we'll talk about some of these other shapes in just a moment. But moving on down, say you're not crazy about the way that this text is presented. They have all kinds of pre-laid out text. You can set these, um, the head, what is your heading, subheading, and a little bitty bit of text. So that's really convenient. You just click, adds it right to your page, and you can go ahead and edit it. You just click and change it however you want. They do have some nice layouts if you want something. If, you're not, if you don't feel like you can think about an easy way to lay out that text, this is super helpful. Okay, It makes it way faster to design a nice looking social media post or an ad or a PowerPoint slide um, because it's already laid out really nicely. Just really want to show you this real quick. If you look, when you have multiple lines, you can come into this feature and actually adjust the line height. So you have complete control over that, which is really nice. Um, really good when you're using like large bits of text. Um, oh, I'm just going to undo it. I don't need this. OK. So these text options give you nice professional looking um, text layouts that you may want to try. And they've got, as you can see, quite a lot of them. Um, videos. OK, so what I mentioned before, you might want to get the kids' attention at the end of the day. You pop a video in as your background, and that's going to get their eyes. Okay, so you can download that as a video, or you can download it as a GIF. Um, so you can also upload your videos, which I'll show you in a little bit. But that those are really great for catching attention on social media, or catching attention near the end of a lesson, or as an engagement at the beginning of the lesson. 
um, photos. Okay, this is probably something you're going to use more than just about anything else. Okay, um, again, you've got the little crown that means that is um, something you have pro for, but you can search for any term and it's going to bring up some options. So I'm going to just drag in this. Whoop. I want it to drag it in at the background. Usually, if you drag it in at first, it'll just background it, but no, it's not going to do it today. That's okay. So, and again, I can just resize that make it really big. It's presently in front, centering it. I can move my text around. Let that poor kid be seen. I can say, I'm, I'm kind of done with this, I'm kind of done with this, you know. Um, so you, you have control over how you layer things. Like say, I don't want, you know, best to show up. I can put it to the back and it should, oh, it should be backwards. Oh. My apologies. Um, so you can adjust the alignment and the layering of everything. Again, one thing that Canva doesn't have is it doesn't have a discrete layer table or a layer window like you might see in Photoshop. And so sometimes it can be a little challenging to know where things are kind of in the grand scheme. But usually I'm using this for fairly simple graphics, so I'm not too worried. All right, speaking of our dad photo here, you'll notice there's all kinds of effects. So I can, for example, I think this might actually be this. I can adjust its transparency. Okay. I can adjust any kind of color. It actually will give you all the colors that are in the photo. So if you want to say, um, I want just the text. Okay. So go to the back. Get it the text. Here we go. So say I want to make that color match or go along with something in my photo, I can do that really easily. Um, not that, that necessarily looks good but in this case, but you can do it. You can also adjust the photo itself, which, oh, what did we just do? Sorry about that. Um, wants me to share the image. So effects, okay. Background remover is a pro effect. Um, if you get an educator account, that can be really useful. But there are all kinds of other things you can do. Um, so these are mostly like very kind of artistic, um, almost if you're familiar with Photoshop, it's like an action um, that will really kind of add like fun distortion. Um, I enjoy primarily these color mix. It's so like, look, it's Rainbow Dad. Um, and you could choose to apply it or not. I like Duotone is another good one. All you have to do the first time is that you connect it to that and then boom, it's available for you to use pretty much forever. So you can you can use stuff like that. This is yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, and of course, if you click on the little filters there, you can adjust the intensity. You can adjust what adjust what colors you're using. So that's um, a really fun thing to play with. Filtering is kind of like Instagram filters, or you know you probably use that sort of thing before. So same basic idea. Presets. You can adjust the intensity, and these are really fun, especially if you're just going grayscale. I really uh, Really find that useful. Um, I kind of like so. Um, and then you can go back to none if you want. If you want to directly adjust things like your brightness or your contrast, you can do that with the adjustment. Very simple. And you can reset. Um, notice down here the filter code. Again, this is another thing that if you adjust a photo and you've got it just kind of to a, like a, your own private filter, your own special customized filter, write down that filter code because you can enter that for any photo and it will adjust to the exact same um, place, which is very helpful if you're reproducing over and over again, or if you've got a lot of very similar photos. Um, you can, of course, crop your photo. So maybe, oh, come on. This one's being a little weird. It does not want to let me crop right now, but you can do it. Um, so, and you can, of course, flip the photos. So flip. Just like you can with um, the elements that I showed you before. So those are some of the very basic features that you're going to use. Another fun one, if I take out my take out dad, is backgrounds. These I find are really helpful. If I want to make like a again, always looking for the free ones. Say I want like a really nice um, template for a Google slide. 
because uh, I don't feel like Google Slide has really great attractive templates, but I can design, you know, an eight and a half by eleven um, background in here. You know, maybe put some, you know, information like, you know, Miss Sandy's Maker Movement, you know, whatever information on the bottom, and then download it as a graphic, import it into my Google Slides as part of the master as the background, and now I've got a really nice custom background that I can make look however I want. Like, I mean. Are you telling me that wouldn't be a really cool like background for a Google slide when you're talking about geometry? Right? Pretty fun. So these backgrounds are great. Most of them are free. You may have lots of different options. Um, and so say you pick kind of a very vivid background like this one. Okay, that might be hard to read. Not a problem. Come on back up here to elements and grab a shape. There are lots of different shapes. Most of them, again, are free. So I'm going to grab this straight piece here and just resize it to the tr triangle I want. And now I've blocked out that center piece of my background and I've got a good place that I can um, write on. So this is great if you're making custom backgrounds for your PowerPoint uh, slides or for your Google Slides or any of those kinds of applications. Um, it's a nice way to give yourself something special. Um, and that's how you use shapes. And like I said, there's all kinds of different shapes. And you can resize them too, just like you could the other items. You can change the colors. Now, another little bit of downfall to Canva, you'll notice that there are um, a width and height measurement there. You can't like go in and like set that. Like I want to be able to click on it and like type in my numbers. You can't. But at least you can get a sense of how big something is, um, which is helpful again when you're working in the context of maybe something that you want to print. All right, so that's that. I'm going to take out because I want to do something different. I'm just going to take out this text completely at the moment, actually. Now, say I want to put in a picture, but I want it framed and I want it to look really cool. Well, that's where these frames come in. So, I don't know. What frame do I want? I like this one. So, this means you can dump a photo in here. So, if we come to uploads, you can upload pretty much any image you have on your computer. Okay, so I don't know, what have I got? Here we go. Let me put Mickey up here. They upload really quickly. If you have the pro account, you can organize these. Once they're uploaded, if you can't find it on your computer, you can actually download the original again, which is really helpful. You can get rid of it if you don't need it. You cannot organize it into a folder without a pro account, which is kind of annoying, but yeah, it's free. So I'm just going to drag that right to the center of that frame, let go, and now you can see it's been framed out really nicely. So um, those are really uh, helpful. Kind of just add a little bit of pizzazz to what you're creating. So you can see, and you can get kind of fancy with them. Like say you want to make it look like you got a little computer screen there, or that you're on a cell phone, um, or you're on a book. So that's, that gives you another kind of realm for creativity. Um, so that's really cool. What else did I want to bug you with? Ah, grids. That's the other one. These grids up here. I really like grids for, um, again, if I'm doing like comparisons. So for a while back, I did a online scavenger hunt of the flowers of spring. And I wanted to put like three example flowers right next to each other. Well, very easy to do in Canva. I just came up here. I found myself a grid that I liked. Okay. And then I could pull in all kinds of different photos, you know, right on in. Again, just put it right into that picture. And okay, I don't have another graphic uploaded, but you get the idea. And you can build really nicely. This is really good, again, when you're pre presenting maybe more informational items, or um, you want to make like a collage of maybe student work. Um, they've got a lot of nice kind of collage um, looking grids. So if you look here, if you click see all, You've got all kinds. So if you're doing like a full page and you want to collage a bunch of your student work together, very easy to do using these grids. And you don't have to put a picture in each one either. You can, for example, if I just take Mr. Mickey out, and instead I'm just going to um, select that one and come up here and say, I would like that to just be a color. Okay, so that way I can put in text here and have nice, even, uh, neat grids elsewhere. So. These, these grids can be really, really helpful, uh, especially when you're pre presenting information or when you want to 
maybe um, compare items. I use them a lot for uh, Google Slides if I want to have like multiple items kind of in one place and I want them to look nice and neat. I find it's easier to come into Canva, drag my artwork here, and download it as one graphic that I pop into my slide than to try and arrange it sometimes in slides itself. Um, I tend to get just a little bit nicer results that way. Um, so that's the basics. Oh, I forgot one of the biggies. Big important thing, templates, okay? This is an easy way to get ready-made, ready-to-go um, work. So you can, of course, from home, you can type in all kinds of different things. But from this context, coming back in, you can see it saved the work, OK? Um, say I want to do, I don't know, food. It'll come up with all kinds of possibilities, like the sushi one is very cute, right? So you can you can download each of these, and then you, again you can just go ahead and adjust it. So even if you pick the template and you're not crazy about the template, you can come over and change that template at any time, and it will adjust, no problem. Um, now, when you're ready to download, you're gonna want to come up here and give your file a name. So I'm just gonna call it Trial. Sure, why not? Um, you can share directly from here with a person, so you can put in their email. You can copy the link and send them the link. So this is really helpful if you just want somebody's input, a set of, a set of eyes, or if you're working with a group. And over here, that little arrow is your download. You have a couple different options. You can do your PNG, uh, which is really great, uh, JPEG, your <laughs> PDFs, either um, if you're using it online or if you're going to print it, and then video and GIFs if you want to use those. Uh, great for social media great to catch kids' attention, so you can download as that. Um, they do have this animation thing that's a pro. I mostly just do a GIF, it works fine. Um, so those are your download options. You're just gonna click what kind you want, and there you go. Prepares your design, drops it right into your download folder, ready to go. Um, if you did have a um, premium graphic in there, it would ask you to put in a credit card and to pay for that. Um, but that's not something that you need to worry about here. Okay, some other things that you may want to know about Canva, because that is the kind of quick and dirty what you need to know. Oh, real quick, if you are doing a multi-page document, it's easy to add another page. You can, of course, change how much or how little you see. So if you want it smaller or bigger, you can do that, or you can just have it fit to the page. You can copy the whole page, um, you can add notes to the page. This is really useful because you can actually design a whole presentation right in Canva um, and have your notes and everything all in one place. And then obviously add a new page again. Okay, so that's the quick and dirty of like how Canva works, what kind of stuff it has. It also has down here under more ways for you to link to um, different apps. So for example, if you have a lot of um, graphics on Facebook that you want to use, you can link that. Um, and then you can post directly to Facebook from Canva. If you have a lot of photos on Instagram, you can link that. Dropbox, same thing. So it's very easy to integrate these sorts of things. QR code is very useful. Um, if you've ever used QR codes in a classroom setting, it can be really helpful if the kids have like a tablet or um, are using cell phones. A QR code can take them directly to a website or to a game or a Google form. From the publicity standpoint, a QR code can take them directly to your website or, you know, I might link to my Amazon page for my book. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to use these and you can connect a, a wide variety of different um, apps. Another thing that's really fun as a teacher, charts. I love the charts. So me, I'm going to click the button, I'm going to drag a box over all of this and I'm just going to hit delete, clear screen. These charts are pretty great. I mean, let's face it, they look nicer than Excel or Google Sheets. Um, and you can type in your information the same as anything else. Uh, so you're just, you know, different types of charts that you can use. You can adjust the colors. You can adjust the text used. Um, you know, this can be, I don't know, number of cats. Um, and I think there are probably 50 cats, I don't know. So, <laughs> and adjust on the fly for you. So this is a really nice way to make a really stunning looking graph for a presentation. Some kids may also find it easier to do graphs in this. It doesn't have all the um, kind of overwhelming possibilities and features 
that Excel or Google Sheets may have. So some kids may prefer just kind of a straight up, um, more simple mode for creating a spreadsheet or creating a, um, a chart. So you may want to think about that. Some kids that are a little more visual, this can be a really powerful tool for them. Also great for infographics, of course. And you can down here just paste in data directly from a spreadsheet. So if you've already got it in Excel, pop it into here, make it look pretty, and then throw it into your presentation. So I, I do like the bar charts. They look really nice. Um, and you've got lots of different options. And they, you know, again, I don't have to mess around with a whole bunch of stuff in, in Sheets or Excel. They already look nice. I can do very little and I get nice quality from it. Um, okay, so real quick, one other thing to know. When you get started and get in this home screen, you may find uh, that, you, that you know you want to make a poster or you know you're making an Instagram post. Very easy. Social media, they have pretty much any different thing that you could ever imagine ready to go. Um, same with documents, okay, A4 letter, they've got resumes, brochures, all kinds of things. Um, all kinds of different prints that you can do, okay, fly everything. Um, maybe personal item, photo collage, maybe a card for Christmas, uh, event posters, okay, so just a ton of different possibilities. School, very useful for teachers like us, so easy to make worksheets, infographics, presentations, um, lesson plans, like you want to take your lesson plans to the next, you know, step. You really can here. Um, and again, if you get the educator um, license, really, really cool, you have the resize button then. So this lets you automatically go from, say you want a small graphic that you can throw into a social media um, post, but you also want like an app, eight and a half by 11, it will resize everything for you, which makes it so cool and so easy to, um, to use the same document in multiple different ways. Um, but that is, a, that is, like I said, a premium, a pro feature. Worth having, though, if you can get the educator, um, Canva for educators. So that's really helpful. One other thing I'm going to show you that can be useful, um, <clears throat> Sometimes Canva doesn't notice, like if you have a graphic, what colors are in that graphic. It does pretty good now with photos, but they do have Canva Color Picker. So you can upload pretty much any image again. Uh, let's see what I have. Would be good. Something simple. Let me just, oh no, I'm thinking it. I'm overthinking it. See? Talk about me. All right. And what it does is it gives you that hex code, again, for whatever color you want. So you just copy, right? Or maybe you like this blue, whatever. You come back to one of your designs. Um, I don't know what was I working on. Come back to one of your designs and say, oh, that is an atrocious yellow. I don't like it. Go to new color. See down here? I'm going to take that out. And you're going to just control V, pop in the color that you got from the color picker and adjust it. So that makes it really easy to customize um, based on whatever picture you want to use. Like I said, it's getting better about doing that in and of itself. So like when I click on color, it, it will sometimes grab the photo and be able to give you the colors and sometimes it doesn't. So if it doesn't give you the photos, the colors from your photo, color picker is the way to go. Last little tidbit, don't let designs stick around forever. Um, delete them if they are not something that you need. Um, <laughs> you can also make a copy of it. So if I'm going to say every week I'm doing, um, you know, a, a question or a puzzle, you might want to just duplicate that document over and over again so that you have them um, and can throw them all into a folder so you might be able to use them again next year or for the next session that you do of the classes. But um, and you don't have to overwrite them. Okay, but they all still look the same. So the duplicate's really useful. And like I said, toss what you don't need because it can get really cluttered really fast. <laughs> um, so that is the basics of using Canva. It is a really powerful um, app, especially considering it is completely free and educators can get that educator account, which gives you a lot of the pro features, which is fantastic. Um, if you need help, they do have good help files up here under learn they do have a bunch of videos 
um, to help you with using uh, Canva. Um, Discover is really good because up here they'll have all kinds of like, do you want photos? What kind of what kind of thing are you doing? Again, the templates are just so powerful. They even have an entire education section for um, templates. So it will save you a tremendous amount of time. It will make your presentations look more professional. It'll make your social media look more professional. It's just really, um, it's really well worth the time. So I hope that this answered some of your questions about Canva. Um, I hope they give you some tips that you might be able to put into use with your own educational endeavors. Um, at the very least, you'll have a great, nice YouTube cover and a nice title page and things like that, right? Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at sandy at enrichscience.com. Um, you can also find me on Twitter as Kaleidoscope Sci, <laughs> or just visit my website and you can find all my social media and contact information there. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this first EdTech Tuesday. My name is Sandy Roberts. I'm the author of the Big Book of MakerCamp Projects and um, the owner of Kaleidoscope Enrichment. I hope that you'll come and see me over on Family Maker Camp. I am doing workshops there. And of course, on my YouTube channel, I include all the different uh, online programs I'm doing, both for the library system and for my own business. And I hope that you enjoy those. Um, I hope that you get out there, make some cool stuff. And if there is ever any piece of ed tech that you would like me to cover and talk about, I will do my best. Just let me know what you're interested in. All right, take care, uh, be strong, be safe, stay healthy, and uh, I'll see you next week.